Today our subject matter is the day the kingdom came. The day the kingdom came. We're going to begin in the book of Revelation. And this scripture describes some events that preceded the resurrection many, many, many years ago if we go by earth time. Heaven is not on earth time, so I don't know how long ago it was. It says, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. In the history of the world, there has never been a fight between the devil and Jesus. You cannot fight God. Because that would be an ugly, quick fight. <laughs> and so when the devil and his angels decided that they wanted to usurp God's authority, God said, I'm going to select somebody on your level to deal with you. He said, I, I'm not dealing with you. I'm going to select somebody on your level. And he said, I'm going to select somebody who is uniquely qualified. And his name is Michael. And Michael has big hands. It says... And his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them, for them in heaven. And then the, the book of Revelation goes on to say, And I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Now, do you think he fell voluntarily by light, by, like lightning, or what happened? It was the result of Michael's activity. So there was, no, there was found, no, no longer found a place for him there. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to earth. Everybody say cast to earth. Now when we think about earth, when it says cast to earth, it's not talking about the physical dirt. He was cast to the realm of earth, not earth itself. Because in order to be legal on earth, you have to have a dirt body. And he had no dirt body. He was a spirit being. So he was cast to the realm of earth. And his angels were cast out with him. So they surround the earth and they influence the people with bodies by gaining access. So this situation happened where Satan was cast to earth. And then the Bible says that God created man. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 through 28 it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. Everybody say dominion. Dominion means Sovereign rule. Sovereign means you have complete authority. If you are a sovereign, no one can talk to you because you are it. On the earth, man was made it. He was the sovereign ruler of earth. God didn't say, we're going to share dominion. He said, you have dominion. It, this is yours. Whatever you name, whatever you claim, whatever you desire... It will come to pass as long as you exercise your authority in coordination with me. Now, if you try to move away from my authority, then you're going to have problems. So it says, over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. So God gave man dominion over everything except man. He said you can dominate the fish, the birds, everything else, but you cannot dominate each other. 
because we are all the image of God. None of us are better than anybody else, which is why racism is so stupid. There's no one better than everybody else and anybody else because we were all made in his image. It says, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, and he identified how he cre created them. And I'm going to explain why people can't identify that anymore in a moment. He created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, be multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion. Everybody say, have dominion. So God was about dominion. Now, dominion, if you are a sovereign, it means you are actually a king. Man was king of the earth. You know, people say, you know, the lion is the king of the jungle. The lion could never be the king of the jungle as long as a man is alive. Because no matter how strong and how fierce a lion is, a man can beat him. A man can find a way to defeat a lion easily. You know, you know, you know what's interesting? Man has such dominion that man can take a lion and have a chair and a whip and beat the lion with the lion standing right there and the lion doesn't understand that I got teeth, I could easily rip him apart. That's dominion. It means that there's something in us that even the animals recognize these people are a little higher than us. It says, over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. Essentially, man was given the keys to the earth. That's what happened. He was given the keys. He said, God said, I am giving you the keys to the earth. Everybody say, man had the keys. He had the keys of the kingdom of earth. Now, there's an interesting scripture, and this is fast-forwarding a bit, but this is just for understanding purposes. So now we have Jesus and the devil in conversation. And the devil says some interesting words to Jesus. He says, all this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me. Say, delivered to me. What is he talking about? He is telling Jesus that everything that you see here on the earth, whatever you desire, I can give it to you. Now, he's telling God that he can give him what he created. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? But this is indication of a transaction that happened. It says... And I give it to whomever I wish. Jesus didn't say, devil, I rebuke you. You are lying. He never argued with the devil. So that tells you that this was a fact. Everybody say checkmate. So the devil was essentially reminding Jesus that I have you on the checkmate. Because... The man you put in charge to rule and have dominion is now under my dominion. I captured him. Checkmate. You can't get him back. And not only that, I own the territory. I can give it to whoever I wish. Isn't that interesting? That's a, that's a weird thing to, for a conversation to have. Because, I mean, you know, God is all-powerful. Uh, he's the ruler. He's, he's everything. And yet, the devil is telling him, you can't touch this. Isn't that interesting? Now, the reason that could happen is because of the way God explained himself. And, you know, one of the things that... <laughs> I sometimes laugh at people. People start to say things like, well, that don't make any sense. It don't have to make sense to you. You see, God doesn't have to figure out us. We have to figure out him. Amen. And if you want to understand God, you begin by listening to what he says, not trying to tell him what it should be. If God says this is the only way to do it, then it ain't no other way for it to be done. 
Everybody say, checkmate, kingdom lost. Man did not lose religion in the garden. So religion cannot save him. He lost kingdom. He lost dominion. He lost, the Hebrew word is Moshel. He lost Moshel. So he lost kingdom. Now I want to tell you something that's interesting about man. And it's very important to understand the dynamics of God and man and the devil and everybody else. The way God created us, we are hardware and software. I'm, I'm a computer. I own a computer company, so I do a lot of computer stuff. And what computers reveal is the mind of God. Because whatever man does, it, it came from God. So if you see a man does, does something, that has something to do with God. So when they came up with this whole uh, concept of software and hardware, that's, that's God. That's, that's a, a revelation of God in the earth. Your body is hardware, and your spirit is the software. And if you know anything about computers, the software runs the hardware. Amen. Amen. The hardware never runs the software. The hardware just takes the programming of the software and executes it. So we have a situation where the devil introduced some malware. If you understand computer terminology, it's a computer virus. He introduced a virus into the system of man, so his software got corrupted. That virus is called the Cinevirus. This virus has killed more people than COVID and polio and all the other viruses all put together in the history of the world. This is a bad virus. This virus is so bad that it can confuddle up the, the earth to the point where people don't even recognize what gender they are. This is a bad virus. Essentially, the devil is a hacker. If you want to give him a, an identity, he's a hacker. So he, he finds a way to get into what God created and hack it and mess it up and introduce viruses and corrupt it. So people don't operate the way they were designed to operate. Because of the sin of virus, a man will go to college, get degrees, um, have all kinds of things and, 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 and become a billionaire and die of fentanyl or cocaine. How could that happen? That could only happen because of a virus. A virus called the sin of virus. The sin of virus distorts your thinking. Your software is so corrupted you don't operate properly. And if you've ever seen a computer virus, it just messes up your system. It causes the system to crash. It causes it to malfunction. It doesn't operate the way that it should. Are you all still with me? Everybody say malware. The devil is the king of malware. Mal means malicious. So he, he introduced some malicious software into the world. And now, you know, when we think about man having the keys, sometimes we think of physical keys. You know, we think of walking around with, a, with, a, with keys. And, can I have my keys a second? You know, all my life I was thinking that Jesus used to go around. And the Bible says he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. So I'm thinking he, he had these keys. But if he has keys, what, does, what, what do you put it into? So it's not really physical keys. It's software. It's a software code. You know, you know what's interesting? If you have... So the, so the devil essentially... Got the code that man had. Man had a code that caused him to dominate in the earth. And the devil came in and hacked the system, stole the code, put in a new code, and then nobody could access it without him. You know, if you have a phone, your phone has all kinds of capabilities. Your phone can do all kinds of stuff. I mean, you got all these apps and all that kind of stuff. But if you don't have the code, it's worthless. So that's essentially what the devil did to man. The devil corrupted the system 
and then stole the code. And so whatever man wanted, he had to go to this new system administrator. And it was done legally. It was an illegal move that was done legally. So what he did was he convinced man, who was the owner of the earth, who had dominion in the earth, he convinced man to transfer authority legally over to him. So that's what happened in the earth. Your new system administrator is called Belzebub. <laughs> Can you imagine that? You go to a company and you, and you say, who's the system administrator? Belzebub. <laughs> All right. So God admits capture but not defeat. So God says, you know what, devil? You got man. I have to admit it. You captured him. But as we know, God does not lose. You can't defeat God. So no matter what the circumstance is, no matter what you do, you think that you have him in checkmate, but God, you can't checkmate God. You have to be operating on malware to believe that you can, you can, you can, uh, you can, you can checkmate God. And the devil was under that delusion. So God admits capture but not defeat. And then he starts to make some coded statements. Now people, were, you know, some, somebody said to me one time, they said, well, why didn't just God kill the devil when he, when he did that? Well, you have to listen to God's explanation. God said, look, my word is above my name. If I gave my word on something, I can't go back against it. And if I say man has dominion, then he has dominion. If for any reason anybody goes and takes that legally, I can't go back and take it because I gave my word. Now, if you don't understand that, I need you to have a conversation with God. So God admits capture but not defeat. And then he starts making coded statements. Everybody say God always has a plan. No matter what's wrong in your life, God has a plan for you. God says, I know the plans I have for you. Whatever's going wrong in your, in your life, God has a plan. If your rent ain't played, God has a plan. Pay. If your rent isn't paid, if, if, if you're sick in your... It's, God has a plan for everything. And we just have to trust him because if we don't trust him, the alternative doesn't help us. So I just trust God. God always has a plan. Now, Adam was called red earth. So Adam had legal access in the earth. The devil did not. The devil entered the earth through Adam and then gained legal access using bodies. So today he's still using bodies. A part of God's coded statement, and see God is, is introducing some reparative software. God says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So he's, he's, he's giving the devil some code but that the devil can't interpret. And so the devil is there trying to figure out, okay, what does this head and bruise heel, what all of that mean? Because God ain't explain it. So the devil keeps thinking about this thing that has come. He, th he feels like, man, you know, I, 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 I achieved checkmate. God can't, he'll never be able to recover man. That was his conclusion. And then the Bible says there was a meeting in heaven. Now this meeting happened before the earth began. This meeting happened at the foundation of the world. You know, what's, what's, what's so crazy is when you look at the way God talks, it does not make sense to us. How do you do something before the action took place. He said he was slain before the foundation of the earth. But see, the way God operates, if you get a glimpse into the way God operates, the, the God software, it always begins with the solution before the problem happens. God does not start things and then, do, and then, and then complete things. He completes it, then starts it. So it says, all who dwell on the earth will worship him. It's talking about the devil, whose names have not been written in the book of life 
of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So before any of this happened, there was a meeting in heaven and it was already accomplished. And then things began to unfold. Remember this, God's thinking is different from our thinking. And if you want to understand God's thinking, you have to talk to God. You know, we talk to each other to try to figure out God's thinking. Well, what you think God did, and you know, that don't make sense what you say. Let, let me tell you something, man. If you want to find out what God says, you have to ask it. You cannot ask your friend. Because your friend is like Jesus said. He says, if the blind leads the blind, they both fall into a ditch. Unless you like ditches, you better stick with talking to God and looking at his word and, and, and understanding how he explained things. And you know what God said? God said, the way the system operates, I can't go back on my name. And he says, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So the only way to get rid of the sin of virus is for blood to be shed, for a sacrifice. And the only blood that could be good is blood that doesn't have the sin of virus. Isn't that interesting? He said, you know, blood has to be shed, but it can be the blood that you have because your blood has the sin of virus. Because all men have the sin of virus naturally. It's in your system. And it's in your system by introduction of the devil. So God said, there's only one way to do this. Now, if I were God, when the devil mess up, I would have come in and, hi whoop! <laughs> Story over. The first day he, 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 he acted wrong, that's it. But God says, that's not the way I operate. God says, the way I operate is if I give my word, and he's, God said, this is the way it is. And he said, there's only one way. And the way to achieve this redemption is a brutal mission. This is a brutal mission. I mean, if I had to, you know, if I were gone and we were talking about ways to redeem man, I'd say, okay, you know, um, let's go in and let's have some swords or something and, you know, let's, let, let's, let's find a nice way to do this. You know, let's, um, let's, let's, uh, let's say, um, you know, we don't want no cross and all that kind of thing. Let's do something nice. Let's, let's, uh, let's play dominoes or something like that. <laughs> Everybody say a, br a brutal mission. It was a brutal mission, and there was only one person who could complete the mission. There was nobody on earth. There was nobody under the earth. What the song say? I searched all over, and I couldn't find nobody. It says, Psalm 40. Then said I. Who's I? I is the I and I says, then said I, behold, I come. In the, vo in the volume of the scroll of the book, it is written of me. He said, let me tell you something, man. There's only one person can do this. And so in the meeting, he said, I come. Because this has already been written. This has already been finished before it started. And only one person can do it, and it's me. He says, and I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law is within my heart. So he's saying, look, this is a brutal mission, but I delight in this mission. Can you imagine that? You delighting on people spitting on you. You delighting on, on people stabbing you with a spear, beating you. Can you imagine that? He said, I delight. Sometimes it's hard to understand God. But you see, if you ever get a glimpse of the understanding of God, then you understand who you are and what you were designed to be. So Jesus had to leave heaven. And this isn't a story, this isn't a, a visual of, of what it actually looked like, but I couldn't find nothing. I, I, had, to, I had to pull up some Navy SEALs. <laughs> and I say, you know, this is what Jesus looked like coming into the earth. He said, man, I come to the light to do your will. I know this is a brutal mission, and I'm a brutal man. I'm the hardest in the West with the biggest chest. <laughs> and you know what the Bible says? The Bible says God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden, and that God destined for our glory before our time began. So this is a mystery. And the Bible goes on to say, if 
Satan knew what this mystery was, he would not have crucified Jesus. So it says that this is a mystery. A mystery means something that's hard to understand. You can't figure it out. And you see, one of the problems that we have is we try to figure out God on human terms. You have to get to learn his terminology. You have to get to learn his understanding if you want to benefit from his purpose for your life. It's up to us to learn God, not for him to learn us. Amen. We keep trying to tell God what to do as if we created him. Now, if you created God, then please go ahead and do whatever you want to do. But I, I have a feeling that you were not there when the worlds were framed. I just have a feeling. And so you are not authorized to say anything. Just shut up. Amen. Be quiet. All right. Let's, let's, let's continue. And so God said there's only one way in and only one way out. He said you have to come in with unpolluted blood and you have to get out with unpolluted blood. Isn't that amazing? He said only one way in, one way out. You got to come in. And so the mystery was how was this going to be done? The devil was trying to figure out, okay, now how, how, does, how, do, how are we going to do this, man? You know, he's saying this, these all, all these kind of things. He's saying bruise head and, and, and marsh heel and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I wonder how this is going to happen. And the devil was, and the devil had some ideas. The devil said, you know, uh, a child is going to be born who's a king. So let me kill all the children. He didn't know the plan. He, had, he didn't have access to the plan. And so he kept trying to stop the plan. But it was a mystery. It was a good mystery. Only one way in, one way out. And only one worthy. Only one could complete this task. Seal team one. The most high. The I and I. The Bible says only one worthy. And... What did he come to do? See, this, you, you know, the title is The Day the Kingdom Came. You see, in all of this process, we can, we can lose why he came. He did not come to bring religion. He did not come for man to have a good time. He came to restore kingdom. Amen. If you are a king and you have a kingdom and something goes wrong in your kingdom, what are you going to restore? Democracy? God doesn't operate by democracy. He oper operates by kingdom. And in his realm, whatever the king says is law. It says, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, Judea saying, repent for what? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, why would John talk about the kingdom of heaven? Because this is what the resurrection is all about. You know, all of the different things we talk about, the resurrection, none of them matter. You know what really matters? The restoration of kingdom. That's why John said the kingdom of hand is at hand. That's why Jesus said the kingdom is at hand. In other words, the day that, you, that I told the devil about many, many years ago, it's, it's at hand. It's coming. It's coming on resurrection day. It's not coming on another day. It's resurrection day when this is going to happen. It says, for this is he who was spoken of the prophet, Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. So John said, look, I'm here because I don't know the whole mystery, but I know the kingdom is coming. You know, John got to the point where he wasn't sure anymore. John said, you know, uh, uh, shall we look for another? Uh, are you it? You know, because John didn't understand the mystery. Jesus couldn't tell John the mystery. Nobody, you see, Jesus is different from the ordinary operative. And that's what got Adam in problems. Adam started having discussions with the enemy. Jesus don't discuss nothing with the enemy. He tells the enemy what's going to happen. He said, you know, your head is going to get mashed in. He said, one day, the first slap that you had in, in heaven from Michael, the one that sent you crazy, because you go to and fro the earth seeking whom you may devour. He said, number two coming. <laughs> Everybody say change of reign. 
So now we get to the resurrection. So Jesus, through this mystery that he talked about, coming into the world without the blood of a male, of a human male. Because, you know, according to the doctors, you know, the blood comes from the Father. So he came into the world without human blood. And it was required, according to the law of God, that in order for redemption to take place and for sins to be remitted, to get rid of the, the sin of virus, it had to be a blood sacrifice of someone with unpolluted blood. This is what the Bible says. So Jesus came. You see, in the Old Testament, they had lambs and blood, they had, they had goats and, and all kind of different animals they had and they used the blood as a substitute because the blood of, 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 of bulls and goats and pigeons and all of those kind of things, that's not human blood. So that's a substitute, that's a temporary fix. He said the permanent fix for this has to come with somebody who has human blood. And it's a mystery to the devil. The devil did not know what was happening. If the devil understood what was happening, he would have acted differently. So when we, when we, when we um, go to the resurrection, when Jesus goes to the cross, he is simply fulfilling the mission. He is simply saying, this is the process for the kingdom to be restored. That's why the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. You see, we, don't, we, we, have to, we have to commemorate the cross, but we don't have to celebrate the cross. We celebrate the resurrection. You can't really celebrate somebody getting beaten. I mean, I mean you can't really celebrate the torture. What, you can't celebrate what he went through. You have to recognize that only one person could do this. It was me. Y'all would have been sin, in sin for the rest of your life. So what happened was he went to the cross, he fulfilled the requirements of the law. Amen. The law said it must be a blood sacrifice, it must be non-polluted blood, it can't be blood with the sin of virus in it, and it says that once that's completed, there's no more need for sacrifice after that. There's no more need for blood of bulls and goats or any, anything else. He said, if, when this sacrifice is completed, you are now free. Amen. Kingdom is restored. And so what, what, what resurrection day did was change the reign. So the Bible says, up until resurrection day, sin reigned. The programming of the devil reigned in us, causing us to do foolish things. You know, a man has a beautiful wife, and he go around the corner to find this jungler's woman with her peace and pursue her. And then he, it, it, and it makes sense to him. Now, you and I, we look at him and we say, man, this guy got to be crazy. He is crazy because he is polluted by the sin of virus. The sin of virus, you don't think straight with the sin of virus. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You see, what was I doing on the corner? My father owned a grocery store. In fact, he owned three grocery stores. At one point in time, he, owed a he owned a boat and he owned a plane. What am I doing on the corner? Not only that, what am I doing breaking in, oh, well, not breaking in, but um, that's a different story <laughs> for a different day. <laughs> what, what am I doing in super value with meat down in my pants? <laughs> that got to be a sin of virus. But you see, when Jesus completed the sacrifice, the rain changed. Now let me explain the rain to you. Everybody say the day the kingdom came. You see, on resurrection day, the kingdom 
was restored. We were salvaged. Salvage means return to full value. We were redeemed. In other words, the price was paid, so we got the benefit of, of, of his sacrifice. We had a change of reign. Now, let me show you what it says. It says, therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, but what? Does it mean, but that he also first descended? So it's, it's, this is describing the process. It says, you know, when he went on the cross and, and, and he was crucified and, and, he, and, and he died, it said he descended. And man, I would have liked to have a front row seat for that party. It says, when he descended, he went, well, let's, let's, let's read it. It says, into the lower parts of the earth, he who descended is also the one who ascended. So he said, you know, he went there, and then he ascended on high. But that don't describe the activities that happened there. We're going to get to that in a moment. It says, far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you, you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the what? Everybody say the day the kingdom came. So it tells us that what we needed was kingdom. This verse of scripture is telling us that he did this so that we could be qualified to share in the kingdom. Everybody say it's about the kingdom. Now, I want to show you something. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. Now, this is just verifying what I said. You see, when you read the book, it explains it. It says, Jesus was the one who came and rescued us from the dominion. So we were under the dominion of Satan and the sin of Iris. And it says, he came... And he rescued us from the dominion of darkness. In other words, he pulled us from where we were. And he brought us into the kingdom. Everybody say, into the kingdom. So this means if he brought us into the kingdom, we were not in the kingdom. We lost kingdom. We were separated from the kingdom. But the resurrection brought the kingdom back. says, into the kingdom of the sunny loves, in whom we have redemption of sins. And let me see if I can wrap up real quickly. Now, the Bible says that he went to hell and he took the keys. It was not this kind of keys. Jesus ain't walking around, you know, I have the keys. No, Jesus took the code back. And you see, he gave man the original keys. Man had the code. But the Bible says the first Adam is from the earth. The second Adam has the keys, and he ain't giving them to no first Adam again. This time around, the keys are in the hands of the Lord. Jesus has the keys. And so... It says, whatever you want to do on earth, you have to use the keys. You have to have the code. And the code has the name of Jesus on it. So whatever you want to do, if you want to be recognized, you got to have the code. you got to have the keys. He said to the disciples, he said, man, I'm going to give you all the keys of the kingdom. But he wasn't giving them none of these. He said, man, I'm going to give you something. He said, without me, you can't do nothing. He said, this time around, the last time I gave you all the code. This time around, if you want the code, you have to use it through me. He said, I, I'm, I'm not risking or chancing another one of those episodes. The devil has already been defeated. The Bible says he made a show of him openly. I can imagine what happened in hell. I can imagine Jesus saying, boy, I felt them blows on my head. One for you, boy. <laughs> saying, man, you know, I remember them passing my side. Whoa, whoa. Boom. <laughs> so he has the keys. And you see, 
We have access to the keys, but we don't possess the keys. That's why he said, if you go, you go in my name. If you go in your name, if you start out in my name and you go in somebody else's name, the, the code ain't going to work no more. You got to go in my name. If you don't go in my name, the keys are not working. And let me tell you what happens. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, And when you being dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, and having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us. So it says that Jesus erased the handwriting. So the devil had a legal contract. The Bible says he erased that. He wiped that out. He reused the whiteout. Y'all remember the whiteout? Those of you who are old enough to remember typewriter, he erased that. He says that, um, and he is taking it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public, public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it. So Jesus embarrassed the devil. He said, man, you thought you had checkmate. He said, but how could you outsmart the, the I and I, the most high? He said, you know I was coming for you. Take your licks like a man. <laughs> so Jesus has the code. Now let me tell you what that means. It means that the original programmer is back. And the whole code of the program is about the kingdom. And let me tell you what that does. The day the kingdom came, you know what that means to you? It means that your rights and dominion have been restored. It's not been restored to the original physically, but it's restored to the original spiritually. Because in spite of all that we appreciate that's happening in the world today, we have to understand that the Bible says there's a God of this world. So unless the whole world submits to what we're talking about, you can be living in a hostile environment. People will not like you. You know why? Because you are opposed, you, you, you're opposed to the software. They're operating on the sin of virus and don't even know. The kingdom coming means we are no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. The kingdom coming means that you have life and have it more abundantly. The kingdom coming means that the things that were out of order have come back into order. You know, there, I, I see some redemption and restoration. I see some kingdom stories in here. I see some people, you know, I, I heard some testimonies in this place. I heard people, you know, who, uh, I, I'm not going to call any names or anything like that, but, you know, I, I heard of a, a man said, you know, man, he was wealthy and doing good and, and he, he was messing up his money with gambling and all kinds of stuff. And then he came into the kingdom. And everything was restored. And when it was restored, then he started doing good. Isn't it amazing that when you enter the kingdom, things just start to get, everything gets better. My life was restored to full value. Some other people in here, their lives were restored to full value. And some people, their lives were restored to full value and they still chasing junglers. You got to come back to the kingdom. God gave us victory. Now, what is the victory over? Victory is over whatever is bothering you. Whatever is wrong with your life, God has a plan for you. And the resurrection, the day the kingdom came, it means that there's a possibility for whatever is wrong in your life to be resurrected. You know, you may have a business and you say, my business is finished. You may have a relationship and you say, man, I can't live with this woman or I can't live with this man. Guess what? Resurrection power is possible. That situation can change. You know, people go around and say, well, you know, um, we decided we're incompatible. Ain't nobody compatible. I might as well tell you that right now. <laughs> if you're waiting on compatibility, you will get divorced every week. <laughs> Ain't none of us compatible. The blood of Christ makes us all in order. 
And sometimes you got to fight through the foolishness of the world. You have to fight your own flesh because you see the sin of virus is still present. And if you don't, if the Bible says you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you don't check for viruses, come back in and then you find yourself doing the same stupid thing you did before. You know, a man could lose his money gambling and, you know, he gets saved and get restored and all of a sudden he starts doing good and then the sin of virus comes along and he goes back and do the same thing. Brother, what do you think? A different outcome this time? Your, your wife left you and she came back and you have a beautiful wife. She looked better than the junglers which you're fooling with and you still go back to the jungle. Man, you got to renew your mind. Because if you don't renew your mind, you end up submitting yourself to the sin of virus. When the kingdom came, we could face tomorrow. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. Anybody else in here, you know. If you know, say, I know. Who holds the future? And life is worth the living. You know, they had a man some, some weeks ago. This, this man was a billionaire and committed suicide. How could you commit suicide? Everybody trying to get money, brother. You got it and you committed suicide. What happened? It means that the kingdom didn't come to him. When the kingdom comes, you can face tomorrow. When the kingdom comes... All fear is gone.